In today's episode of The Swing Report, we are covering the Tour Edge Exotic 722 irons, both the E722 and C722. Got Thomas with me today to hit some shots, do some testing. We'll tell you everything that you need to know. And golfers, make sure you like the video, you leave a comment, give us your take, and then subscribe to the channel. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. New Tour Edge irons for 2022, the Exotics models E722 and C722. Uh, we just completed the driver testing and we were very impressed there, so I would expect nothing less here with the irons. Uh, Thomas, two models here, they look similar, but there's very different in, uh, in size as well. So uh, what do you see when you first look at them? Yeah, it look kind of similar, but the difference between the C and the E is probably the offset that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. So the E722 has quite noticeable offset on it. The loft also is two and a half degrees stronger than the C722. Um, so that's going to probably generate more ball speed. E is, you know, extremely, I think extreme forgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be for the golfers that need a little help with their iron game. Sure. I think of it as a golfer that has a hard time with dynamic loft. So if, okay. you're, if you're swinging and you just have a hard time compressing the ball, maybe hit the ball kind of high and spinny to the right, E722 is going to fit yeah. that. That offset might help them a little bit with squaring the face and creating, like you said, that compression and that, that impact that's necessary to get the ball out there to the yards that they can, they can get. Yep. And then the C, C722 is kind of a, a player's distance iron, mm -hmm. um, which is going to kind of compete with your other manufacturers that have those hollow body irons out there. Yeah. It has 30 degrees of loft on it, so it's a little bit weaker on the loft, but in comparison compared to you know, blades or cavity backs, it's still stronger, so it's going to go further. For sure, and so when we talk about the, the technology in these two irons, there's two key pieces that are in both irons. That's gonna be the dual vibra core technology. It's kind of a, a TPU insert that helps with feel, but also a distance enhancing feel. Uh, and then that diamond face, which actually is also uh, in the drivers. Uh, and in the E722, that is 103 little diamonds. Uh, and then the C722, it's 92. But what they do is uh, basically act as mini trampolines for that superb ball speed all across the face. Uh, and so then with the E722, you have a 360 undercut design. Uh, there's a big cavity basically uh, behind that club face. And then you also have extreme toe weighting, which again adds that stability. And like you mentioned, those players that maybe need some help, need more extra help from their golf clubs, the E722 is going to be great for them. Right. Yeah. Forgiveness is key in the E line, mm -hmm. whether it goes whether it's driver, fairway woods, or irons. And I think it's definitely no exception with these irons. Mm -hmm. I, I see forgiveness screaming at me, and I feel like it's. Uh, it's designed for the golfers that have a hard time controlling their ball flight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then you, th you mentioned the uh, C722 is going to be in that player's distance category. It's a military grade and barraging steel kind of uh, L cup face, really explosive uh, material there. It's very similar to the, like the T200 club face, a very similar material there. So a lot of explosiveness uh, for sure. Hollow body design, like you mentioned, but then it's also like, it's a pretty compact shape for player resistance iron. It seems like that category is, be, is getting smaller and smaller as the years go by here and still maintaining that explosive technology. So we'll test that and see that in the C722 here. So in terms of the testing, Thomas, I know we've maybe thought about uh, swing speed here and, and keeping that uh, you know as a fit right for these clubs. So how are right. we gonna do the testing today? Yeah, so I mean, let's start out. So the 70 to 80 mile an hour category, maybe the high 70s, um, most, you know, that would fit probably in the, the E. Okay. Uh, I think about golfers that have a hard time kind of getting the ball up in the air. Mm -hmm. My concern with the E would be the loft. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, can, I can hit some shots. Now, my attack angle is going to be different to those golfers. Yeah. So, we know, might notice the spin rate being kind of low and the height being pretty low. Well, let's test it. Let's see what okay. happens there. And I can, uh, I can swing, change my, my club speed a little bit. Yeah. And then, you know, C722, maybe just swing. We'll do a stock swing. And uh, you know, can compare that to other players' distance irons as well. And, we'll. and then we should also note and remind golfers to stay tuned to the channel, subscribe to the channel because we'll be implementing these two irons into our you know ultimate uh, iron tests for the year. Those are always a lot of fun, and uh, you know, Tour Edge is going to be a sneaky performer this year, I think. So, uh, Thomas, you ready to do some testing here? Let's do it. Thomas, the E722 in your hand there. Uh, First of all, I, I have to imagine that has a pretty large look to it at a dress. 
sure it's a pretty you know, thick top line, uh, the sole's pretty wide, things like that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a larger profile that I'm, that I'm used to seeing. I'm seeing quite some coverage from the heel to toe. Okay. I, I mean, you can see the top line's a li little bit larger there too, and the sole, yeah, it's, it kind of, the sole kind of looks like a, a hot metal, Mizuno hot okay. metal kind of sole to me. Um, it actually kind of reminds me of Mizuno hot metal with some offset on it. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And then one thing I know too is, you know, you look at the, on the back of the club, I think that badge kind of covers up really the, how deep kind of that cavity is a little bit in there. Right, yeah, you, you can't really see anything on yeah. the back. I'm, like you said, I'm sure there's some, some hidden stuff yeah. in the back there to cover that up. But let's do some shots, some slower swing speed. A little faster. Mm -hmm. There we go. So we're trying to get kind of in that 70 to 80 range here is what you were saying for clubs. Right. Speed. I think so average I'm trying to get probably be around about 75 miles an hour for, for speed. And okay. I want to do that because I think ping is a great chart yeah. that, that I love to use in, in fittings. Um, talks about kind of ideal landing angle based on your, on your swing speed. Yeah. So I want to talk about that 70 to 80 mile an hour category and talk about where this club kind of fits into. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's kind of, so that's primarily, you're, you, you've said this before, but a landing angle is a big piece of what you're looking for and trying to fit a player. Uh, and so that's kind of part of this test is seeing where E722 falls into based on that swing speed and if it's in that, I guess, optimal window for, for landing angle and all these other metrics. Right, and the slower your swing speed is, the lower the landing angle, ideal landing angle is gonna be. Right. You just can't generate enough height right. because you have less speed. Same thing at the other, other end of the spectrum. The, the faster your swing speed, the higher your optimal landing angle will be. Mm -hmm. but that's when you have to modify the lofts on the golf club and, and figure out what is optimal to give the optimal carry and total distance. Yeah. That was a good ball there. Look how straight that is. Look at the... Wow. <laughs> wow. All right, I, I can't swing better than that. You can't. That's the, that's the perfect golf swing. That's the definition of the zero perfect point swing. Zero paths, zero point zero face angle, zero point zero face to path, and zero feet of curve. <laughs> I mean, we've joked about you being a robot tester. I think this kind of confirms that. <laughs> that's crazy. 75 mile an hour club speed. That's kind of right what I was trying to do. Yep. Uh, it was 39 degree landing angle, which would I would consider that under acceptable when, if you're trying for a yeah. trajectory. Yeah, so Ping's chart actually has, you know, 34 to 40 degrees being the, you know, mid trajectory type of uh, uh, in the middle range, right, for 70 to 80 miles an hour. Yeah. So definitely, you know, giving you enough launch and height at that speed. Right, I agree. Well, I can't beat that, but let's hit a couple more. That's a little faster. Get the average up. Wow, another good one. Unless he wasn't it's that much faster. It's crazy, I'm sure, for golfers to see this. Now, we've talked about how your spin is a little bit lower than most because yep. of your attack, attack angle. angle and you come in relatively shallow and that reduces spin, but it's gotta be encouraging for golfers that are you know, swinging at that average speed to see the distance that you're generating here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it comes down to timing in the middle of the face. You can see, you know, smash factor is very, very high. It's a mm -hmm. com combination of attack angle and dynamic loft. But landing angle is what I'm gonna, I'm, I, what I'm focusing on is, is are we getting enough stopping power for the amount of club speed right. you're generating? Once again, 39 degrees, yep. that was pretty good. All right, so let's take a look at the averages there. So, and the, the one thing to note here, so you know, in terms of that, that mid window, right, uh, from that ping chart, the launch angle for this should be 17 to 19 degrees. Okay. Um, that's what they're saying for mid, and then the landing angle is in that 34 to 40 range. So yep. definitely seeing that with the E722, very much in that window for launch and for landing angle. And you're seeing the ball go so far, lar largely because I think you know your spin is low, and the way you attack the ball. But uh, plenty of distance and explosiveness and launch here with these. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm I'm very comfortable with the landing angle. Now, if it was to be a high trajectory, what what's the range that we would be kind of looking mm -hmm. at based on that 70 to 80 mile an hour club speed? Yeah, so it'd be you're talking about a launch angle of 18 to 21. So we're just outside of that. Yep. 
and the landing angle would be 40 to 46. So okay. you're just shy of that. Just shy so, of that. So in that case, we would either need two things. One, the golfer would have to need a steeper attack angle. Yeah. Or we would need more loft on the golf club. Yeah, which can be done. Which can um, be done. Yes. So that's, and that's if a player is looking for high trajectory at that speed, right? So um, those are the kind of the metrics that you're looking for there. But just, just know that you're sacrificing distance by having a higher trajectory too, though. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's what we see here. I mean, if you were to increase loft, right, you'd increase spin and that would fly higher, but your total distance would drop there. But uh, so there's kind of the, you know, I think this, this first swing you had, you swung a little bit slower than slow. you. Yeah. Then, first uh, one always is fun yeah, to that try first and get here the, was down uh, in below accurate. 70 miles an hour. So, but the rest of these, you were kind of, you know, 74, 75, 75, and 78. So uh, this one is still that straightest shot that I've ever seen. Uh, and so. <laughs> Pretty good performance overall, I think, right? Right. It's it's easy to hit. It actually feels pretty good too. I mean, a swing at that at that speed, it felt it feels really nice off the face. It doesn't feel harsh on the hands mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's just got a nice. Yeah. Good it doesn't. It, and it. it doesn't sound super like loud like some game improvement irons do. Yeah. I didn't get that sense at all. So I I think I I think you know the the sound and feel aspect. I think it definitely checks that box for the category it's in for sure. All right, so let's now do C. Okay, the C722. Again, more of a player's distance iron. It's going to be 30 degrees of loft on this one. And are you going to kind of do you, uh, a stock swing here? You know, maybe let's do slow swing again. Maybe maybe kind of around this and, sh and compare the differences between the two of them. And then I'll do my okay. stock swing. That's fine. And kind of see what we're looking let's at with regards to numbers. So, Thomas, C722 there. Um, I imagine it's a pretty big difference in looks. Yeah, I mean, uh, compared to the E722, this definitely looks a lot more compact. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm still reverting back to the sole here, and I would say it's kind of like the difference between, it's, it's almost like Hot Metal Pro in, in the size okay. of this club head. Uh, kind so of Hot Metal versus Hot Metal Pro at Mizuno. Yeah, correct. Yeah, Hot Metal with more offset on it would be E. This is probably more like long lines of kind of hot metal pro with regards to the okay. looks on the, on the size of the sole and the size of the club head. Okay. Very nice there. So with this one, we should see, just because of loft, we should see that distance drop a little bit and spin probably increase. Yeah, e exactly. That's what you would, that you would notice because we're talking two and a half degrees of loft difference. Good. It's another really straight ball flight. Yep. All right, so that one I got a little heavy on. Okay. Notice how the numbers kind of drop, but it's still adequate based on the speed that I'm generating. Yeah, definitely. That's another really good, good shot. It's almost like you're, it's like you're used to swinging at the speed. <laughs> it looks so it's natural. It's good for tempo practice. So let's bring up this table here. And I'm going to refer back to that chart um, because we wanted to kind of see how these compare. I mean, you can see the launch is higher with the C722, and you can see that the landing angle is steeper. And you know, for what it's worth, both of those figures do fall into the, I guess, higher uh, trajectory category there. Just barely, they're on the low side of that yep. mark, but they're still there. So, so mid to, to high know. trajectory. Yeah, so it's yep. kind of that, yeah, I guess C722 is, it would provide you know, somebody in that swing speed uh, with a mid to high trajectory. So it's good to know though, for those players that are looking to launch the ball higher, uh, that they can, they can get that out of these clubs. Right, and I think the, the loft just kind of did, did its job there. A little less ball speed because there is mm -hmm. more loft on the golf club, so this, essentially the smash factor efficiency number was going to drop. Launch angle went up, spin went up, carry went down, total went down. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what I would expect to see when comparing yep. these, these clubs. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, so now we can maybe take a few stock swings with the C722. Um, we'll just see how that, that stacks up. What would you expect now with you know, 30 degrees of loft players, distance iron, what would you expect for maybe some, some numbers uh, before hitting them? Probably around about 130 ball speed if I'm swinging my, my normal close to 90 mile an hour club speed. Okay. Um, so I'm going to 
distance. It, right. You're going to see distance. Yep. Height will go up. I still think the spin's going to be fairly low, just knowing that usually when I play a distance player's iron, I'll, my spin stays pretty low. But mm -hmm. as long as that stopping power is good, you can get away with it. Yep. I gotta Yo. say the sound is pretty. Uh, it's, it's pretty muted. It's a, yeah. Pretty muted for a for a hollow body club. I would agree. It it definitely doesn't feel harsh on the hands. Ooh, that was some ball speed there. What I do find interesting after hitting the E722 is I'm have a hard time turning the thing over. I was noticing that too. Like, I it don't seems know if like it's there's not that draw isn't showing up for you. I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if it's uh, just not adjusting after hitting I mean, it's a, a good club dispersion. that's going to offset. It's a, it's a good dispersion up there. I mean, you got four right next to each other. Uh, it's just they're all on the right side, which is not something I'm used to from you. It could just be something with going from the, the lar like all the offset to now. Yeah having none, but. That was a better swing. Good yeah, one to finish with. that is the most ball speed of the day, and it's a very, very straight ball flight. Wow. Not as good as the earlier showing, but pretty close there of pad that's, and face angle. It's a good golf shot right there. Yeah. So we'll just oh, bring this up. Keep a perfectionist crazy. Right. <laughs> so what do you think here? Um, C722. You got the numbers up there. Is there anything that jumps out at you? Again, this is we will add this into future, you know, co comparisons of players' distance irons. Um, obviously, you generated a lot. There'd be plenty of height, uh, plenty of you know stopping power there. So uh, it's interesting that the launch angle was basically the same with. Either, well, I was looking at the speed. smash factor yeah. and the launch angle. True. Yeah. You were talking 75 mile an hour club speed versus 92, so 17 mile an hour difference. But the club is doing the, the same, same thing. It's just the club speed that's generating right. the differences. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's funny how much that makes a difference, though, because you have like 50 feet higher in height. You know, landing angle is 10 degrees steeper. I mean, all that's generated by yep. speed. But the club is doing the same thing in terms of the launch angle, launching it, and, uh, you know, the efficiency. So that's impressive. I didn't even, I mean, that, that's cool to see that happen in testing. Uh, and it shows, you know, Tour Edge did a fine job with designing the club, manufacturing the club uh, to produce the, the same results. We're seeing here that 17 mile an hour difference in club speed is generating a carry distance of basically 40 yard difference, mm -hmm. or um, we've got total distance there of about 30, that, 33. Yeah. Yeah. So, so every, yeah, mm -hmm. every mile an hour club speed was around about two yards total distance. There you go. That's pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense. So yeah. I think, you know, there's some good testing here. Uh, the 722 irons, I think there's a lot of golfers that they can fit into too, which we'll get into here shortly. But uh, a lot of forgiveness, a lot of distance. And I think it's just plenty of launch and height, which I think a lot of golfers are still struggling with sometimes. And I think both of these irons deliver that. Yeah, let's talk about a little bit more who these clubs are for. Thomas, testing complete, Tour Edge 722 Exotics irons, uh, E722, C722. Um, you know, what was your overall impression of both? And then we can kind of get into, you know, who each of them is for as well. Uh, but I, clearly a difference between the two, but they both give you the launch and the height that you need. Yeah, I was, I was ple pleasantly surprised with how easy they would have hit when I was talking about club speed around about 75 miles an hour with a seven iron. And then we talked about like the suggestions for landing angle, and mm -hmm. that was still fitting in ideal landing angle, even with less club speed, mm -hmm. which is important because sometimes irons, when the loft's way too strong, you may not hit the ball high enough. Right, right. And that's what you know, the, the difference is. It's still fitting with regards to optimal window for optimal carry a total distance with your seven iron. Yep, and we were finding that, that you know, both these clubs are fitting into the right windows. Now, the E722 is certainly the one that's gonna fit the player maybe with less swing speed or maybe needs a little bit more help, more forgiveness um, on that club head. So, uh, describe to me, you know, when there's a fitting here and you're, you know, bringing out the E722 club head for him or her, what type of player is that person? Probably a little steeper attack angle than I was generating. Uh, probably a little, little tough time with 
uh, dynamic loft. So maybe someone that hangs back on a little bit. Okay. When I'm seeing that dynamic loft being a little bit higher. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a more forgiving club in general for golfers that have a harder time hitting the middle of the face every single time. Yeah. The offset there is great also to get that club face to turn over too. Yeah, so especially someone that might sh have a bit of a fade going yeah, on. Yeah, maybe has that face open a little bit of an impact with their irons now. That offset can correct that for sure. Yep. Uh, the C722s now, uh, again, player's distance iron. A little bit more that you know suits your eye, uh, and I've also we noticed the sound was a little bit better than we thought too. But what type of player for that one? I think that one's a wider range. Yeah. Honestly, I think you could really have even still a higher handicap golfer that hits the ball fairly straight, just wants a little bit of distance and doesn't want to play uh, an offset an I offset iron yeah. um, or something just that looks pretty good. It's it's not the smallest, but it's not the largest. It kind right. of fits kind of right right in the middle. Um, but also for golfers. You know, they're, they're looking for a little bit of distance. There are better players. For sure, I could still play that iron there, yeah. too. And it, we were noticing I wasn't carrying it over 200 yards. Um, the spin rate was a little bit higher than other, you know, players' distance iron yeah. that I've tested in the past. It was very consistent for you, too. That dispersion was really nice that you generated with the C722. Very straight ball flights. Uh, really well with, with both irons today. Right. So clearly some great performance out of the Tour Edge Exotic 722 irons, both models great in testing and they should be awesome for golfers in 2022. If you're interested in either model, come and get fit at Second Swing, whether virtually with the Master Fitter or in store, and we'll get to set up hitting more greens regulation and lowering your scores. So Thomas, thank you for joining all the insight today. Uh, it was great and uh, again, gonna be great options in 2022 here. Yep, not a problem.